morning, buenos dias, or as they say in Portugal, bon dia. Bon. Like B O N E. Bon dia. Hey, listen, you won't believe this. Someone who watches the um, devotionals and knows that I try to have a little variety in how I say good morning, they sent me a cup, which I'm drinking from right now. And on the cup, there's about 15 different languages how you say good morning. So we're going to broaden our cultural base here. And I'll be saying things like Guten Morgen, Guten Morgen, and uh, some others too. You know, in the Philippines, Magadang Umaga, that's Tagalog. Magadang Umaga. Good morning to everybody. We're reading in 1 Samuel. I trust you're all well. We're reading through the book, picking up hopefully nuggets for our spiritual enrichment. And I thank those of you who are sending notes of encouragement to me to keep doing this. And those of you who have given offerings to the church, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 16. The prophet Samuel has been sent to Jesse's house. And Jesse has all these sons, and God has told the prophet, Saul's rejected the current king, but I have found one of Jesse's sons. I'm going to identify him to you. But as all the sons pass by, remember we learned they all look like that's the guy. Big, strong, handsome, and God tells Samuel, nope, that's not the one, for the Lord does not look at the things people look at. Mm. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Samuel asks, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He's tending the sheep. He was thought so little of, Jesse didn't even bring him to the meal. You talk about being dissed. The father doesn't even invite him. The prophet's coming, and he's got his eldest and the next old eldest. And, uh, I mean, the kid, he's, just take care of the goats, would you please, David? We got important business to do. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in, and he was glowing with health, and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil, a symbol of the Holy Spirit, of course, and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. Mm. I wonder how that went down. He anointed him, not privately, but in the presence of his brothers. Don't you think some of those brothers were like, what? God didn't pick me? This little squirt of a brother? He's a non-entity to us. He's going to be the one anointed by the prophet? Mm. Sometimes the blessing and choice of God causes horizontal programs. Even the blessing of God. I see that with people. Family members and others are jealous that God is blessing you. Isn't that sad? Teaches us never to be jealous. We should rejoice because when you're mad at something God is doing, your, your, your argument is not against the person. You, you have a grudge against God. Like, God, what are you doing? You're supposed to work the way I want you to work. It's not to be. And from that day, he anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Samuel went back home. His job was done. And from then on, the Spirit would come upon David. Now, the way the Holy Spirit worked in the Old Testament was different than the New Testament. Let's review that. In the New Testament, in Romans, it says, if anyone, Romans 8, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't belong to God. That's the sign 
of being a child of God, not joining the church, not memorizing verses, not being christened, baptized. In the, at the bottom, the bottom line is a born-again Christian has become a temple of the Holy Spirit of God, a temple of God. Why? Because just like the Holy Spirit dwelt in the tabernacle and then later the temple in the Old Testament, so God doesn't dwell now in any building. He doesn't dwell in Jerusalem. He doesn't dwell in New York. Um, he dwells inside of every believer, and we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I've been with you, but he will be in you. Now, in the Old Testament, the Spirit would come upon people to prophesy, to do mighty works. Think of Samson. Even though he was doing some questionable things, God in his mercy in delivering Israel, the Spirit of God would come on Samson and he went to town fighting those Philistines. Notice, what David, whatever David was going to accomplish, whether it's writing a, a, a psalm, a hymn, or later fighting Goliath, the Spirit of God coming upon him was his secret. You know, I want you to know that about Samson. What made Samson in the book of Judges so remarkable and why they wanted to know the secret of his strength was he wasn't jacked up. He wasn't on supplements and pumping iron at LA Fitness all day. No, he just looked like an ordinary guy. That was why, like, how's he do it? The secret was the Spirit of the Lord. The secret of David doing whatever was, it's not by might, nor by power, human power, human might, but it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord. That's why we, we could have real faith and trust in God today that we can do something to bring blessing to someone else that river can overflow. Remember Jesus said, come and drink. Rivers of living water will flow, not just to satisfy our longing, but overflow to other people. Not by education, not by personal charisma, but by the Spirit of God. Don't we need to return to that kind of simplicity and faith that God will do it? That's why God chose fishermen, tax collectors, to represent him after he went back to heaven. Why? They could never trust in anything but the promise of God. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Let's live in the Spirit today. Let's follow his guidance, and let's trust in his power working through us to bring blessing to others. God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.